Welcome, welcome, welcome to our international podcast, Below the Belt, Who Vex Lose. Good to have you folks here with us, Tommy Gibbs and Isabella Butter. As you know, I see we have a birthday girl here with us as well, Beatrice Selby, one of our favorite, 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 favorite supporters and fans and whatever else you want to show in there for adjectives. And Beatrice is celebrating her birthday today, and we want to say happy, happy birthday. Beatrice, we hope that you go ahead and have a great birthday. We hope it's a great day for you, and, you know, that God grants you the, the desires according to your hearts, according to your hopes and aspirations, Beatrice. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Uh, folks, go ahead and let's wish Beatrice a happy birthday. Beatrice is always here, always here. Soon as you say, quick. <laughs> Shade. Good to have you folks here, especially Beatrice on her birthday. Happy birthday, Beatrice. Again, again, go ahead and have a great day today. Please take it easy. Take it easy, folks. Take it easy, Beatrice. Take it easy. Take it easy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And Magnell says, happy birthday, Beatrice. Magnell Barrow says, happy birthday. And I see Carlton Bevney is saying happy birthday to you, to uh, Beatrice. And uh, some other folks, I wish you happy birthday. Happy birthday, Beatrice. Hope you have a great day. A great day. Folks, good to have you here with us. You know, you guys make the programs what they are. You guys, it's about you. It's all about you. Making sure you have the right information, guys. You know, ensuring that you have the right information. Good to have you, folks. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday. And I hope where Beatrice is, is good weather to have a good birthday. You know, we hope it's good weather. It's 29 degrees where we are, guys. 29 degrees where we are, and they're telling us uh, it feels like 35. Well, it feels like 29 degrees. It feels like 35, weather.com says, and there's a 4% chance it's going to rain. It looks like good weather. Good re weather right into the evening. They're telling us, uh, this is for Georgetown, uh, Guyana, where we're broadcasting our international podcast from. This is where we are. They're telling us into the evenings uh, in Georgetown, National Capital City, Region 4. By extension, we're going to be having a 21% chance of rain into the evenings, but it's only 4% into the afternoon. Folks, looks like it's going to be good weather for us. Looks like it's going to be good weather. And we hope that you guys are having a great weekend. You're going a bit easier on yourself, folks, because that's what we got to do. And that is what we got to do, guys. Thanks for joining us. I need Atkins, Alkins, and I see Myrna Monroe. I see Travanza Williams is here as well. I see Esteline Peters. Good to have you, beautiful folks. Hope the day has started well, JG. Hope it's after a running start. You guys are fired up and you are ready to go. Marlon Thomas is here as well. Tessa Isaac, Strip Sandy. Good to see you. She's just listening. We're so happy. So happy you're listening. Larry Crawford. Welcome, Larry. Good to see you. And Denise Booker says it's 72 degrees in Brooklyn. 72 degrees. Is that good for you? Is that good for you, Denise? Hope it's working out good for you. We see Claire Capella is here as well. Always good to have clear and all you guys below the belt, folks, and who vex lose, who vex vex. Good to have you guys. Great to have you guys. As a matter of fact, great to have you guys. Folks, so much happening. So much happening. Like the whole world has gone mad. The whole damn world has gone mad. When you look at the what's happening out there, when you look at what's happening out there from the uh, HJ uh, event you had last evening in the National Park and gunshots and all that. What's happening internationally, my lord? You gotta keep that him close to you. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer, my God. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. It's that kind of time we live in. We gotta stay close to Father, people. We gotta stay close to Father. But folks, I encourage you. Whatever, whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going through, you know. Whatever you're going through, you can come through. You're gonna come through. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. Otherwise, so many people hurting for so many different reasons, and we hope. We hope, we hope, we hope, we hope you guys know that there is always hope and there is light and there is everything at the end of the tunnel. So what are they going through? You got to go through to come through. You got to go through to come through, folks. And I'm so glad that you beautiful folks are here with us and you guys tune in every program. You all day. You all day, you all day, you all day. Every damn program. We're so privileged to have you folks. And we hope that you guys are having a great Saturday. We were outside this morning. We went outside this morning, folks. I took a little drive around town, got some fresh air. I'm so happy. You know, the weather is just perfect, perfect day to be outside. Getting some fresh air, some 
vitamin, whatever vitamin you get from the sun, whatever, 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 you know. Fantastic day to be outside. Good to see Candy Lynn in the jeet, who is wishing Beatrice a happy birthday as well. Happy birthday, Beatrice. I see Rohan Hope. Rohan, how are you doing, Rohan? Good to see you. Roxana Lessa Jacobs is here as well. She touched down, she land. Marlon Thomas. Marlon, how are you doing? How are you doing, Marlon? Sheila Boy Child. Sheila Boy Child. We there, we there, we there. We outside. Roxanne Odessa Jacobs. Folks, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. What happened last evening? There was this show in the National Park. And, you know, if people want to go outside in the night and catch night during your heart. That's your business, you know. That's your business. You want to go outside and get night and, and get and get, you know, and get hard like cement. I, I can't blame you. Right? That's your thing. <laughs> if that's your seat, you want to be outside, folks. It's all up to you. But, you know, this shooting up indiscriminately in the National Park, uh, you know, following the words of this song uh, by this uh, popular singer, popular lyrics, you know, I, I don't think that was good at all. I don't think that was good. And who vexed? Come fight me, sharks. Fight me. Woke up this morning, wanted to fight some jaguars and trench crackers, tadpoles and cricketers. Fight me. Folks, take a listen to some of what transpired in the National Park. You would think this is Gaza? It's Gaza's gully. <laughs> and perhaps it was. Perhaps it was. Signs of the Times, folks. Signs of the Times. Warnella Garnett. Signs of the Times, Gene Williams. Gene joining us from Brooklyn. You see, these folks is why they, they put the international in the international podcast. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. So you had all this shooting up in the national park, and it was like business as usual for them boys. It was like business. As usual for them boys. Take a listen to some of what transpired in the National Park uh, last evening. It is just, it is just mind-boggling, folks. It's just mind- we can't conduct ourselves like big people, man. We big people. Go enjoy your show, sing your song, do your dance, back ball, cock up your one foot, whatever you want to do. You know, uh, boat around land. But this discharging of wrongs indiscriminately—that is what we have to have a problem with. Take a listen. Take a listen. How it went down in the National Park last evening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't nice at all. Yep, yep, yep. That is what transpired on there in the National Park last evening. I'm eager to see what Hits and Jam says about the situation. That has to be a security concern of national importance. You can't have people just firing weapons um, indiscriminately like that. That is actually against the law. To discharge a firearm like that is actually against the law. And that cannot be um, all fun and games. You go there to enjoy yourself as part of a con- concert. Um, you know, kudos to St. James for putting on these events. People get somewhere to release the stress from all the nonsense in this country. But that, that the, the events of themselves can become stressful. You know, these events of themselves cannot uh, degrade to this man. I'm certain it's not what St. James envisioned. And I'm, I'm eager to see uh, what they say about this uh, indiscriminate firing of guns, right? That sounds a little bit like it was a Middle Eastern country, you know, somewhere where they got a lot of war and conflict. And my probably past Middle Eastern country. So that's how it went down there, folks, in Drani, Lake Ram, and Larry Crawford, and Dennis Booker. I mean, that was just mm, uncalled for, them boys would say, uncalled for. Just in this criminal firing of, um, of guns there. I mean, what's happening? I mean, is there any security measure in place that people are checked for firearms and so on? As they come in, perhaps they should be. Perhaps they should be. You know, are there penalties organizers face when, you know, laws are broken in this manner? 
you know, that could have gone from zero to 60 quick. And let me see the mayhem on, on the ground. People running helter skelter. It uh, sounds like bottles were were being pelted as as well. I understand, you know, people get carried away in the moment and these stupid things. That's what happened. The mind of the crowd is fickle. Shakespeare tell me the centuries ago, the mind of the crowd is fickle. One person only got to do something stupid and then everybody else follow it. Right? And inadvertently, people don't do those things when they're by themselves. You get a little group and then it's, it's mayhem and confusion. Interesting to see what happens. Interesting to see what happens. Uh, um, uh, uh, Marlon Lorma, good to see you. And Wendy Roland, good to see you as well. Mark Alman, good to see you. We out here, people, enjoying this good weather. 29 degrees, folks. I feel like 29 today. And God up wanted to fight some jackabouts and trench crappers, tat poles, and cricketers. Really fired up today. Are you guys fired up and ready to go? I know you guys have been us, with us all week. And we are so grateful, folks. Rock and comment, share the damn live stream, and smash that emoji button, guys. A lot of foolishness happening in the world, and that's just last evening. That's just last evening. We got quite a few stuff happening internationally as well. We thought we were going to bring you that from uh, age day quite early. I'm certain again that's not what the organizers had in mind. Cannot be what the organizers had in mind, but that's what transpired last evening. Uh, regionally and internationally, we're following some information uh, coming up out of this, um, uh, uh, pertaining rather, to this uh, U.S. summit that is coming up in June. Uh, U.S. summit, this is Summit of the Americas. That's coming up from June 6th to 10th in Los Angeles. And, you know, it's got a lot of controversy, right? A lot of controversy surrounding this. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot, a lot of controversy. Right. A lot, a lot of controversy surrounding this this particular issue. And um, the most recent, right, the most recent is the uh, fact that Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua have condemned the exclusion um, from their exclusion from this U.S. summit, Summit of the Americas, that's happening in Los Angeles next month. Yep, yep, they were not invited and they are up in arms. And, and part of the reporting we're picking up out of this, folks, suggests that uh, a block of leftist countries, uh, grabbing this news from Reuters, a block of leftist countries uh, meeting in Havana yesterday, uh, condemned the exclusion of certain nations, certain nations from next month's summit of the Americas after the United States said it only wanted leaders of government that respect democracy to attend. It only wanted leaders of governments that respect democracy to attend. And uh, uh, another part of this report says that the United States will host the Summit of the Americas in, in, from June 6th to 10th in Los Angeles and said that it will not invite Venezuela or Nicaragua, while the summit coordinator said uh, it would be up to the White House to decide whether to invite Cuba. It will be up to the White House whether to invite Cuba. Yep, 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 yep. Savagery rose. That's what's happening. And, you know, we, we would have reported to you guys a couple of days ago that the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, he was saying that uh, CARICOM should boycott this summit as, uh, as, uh, as pertaining to the exclusion of these other nations. Um, and at least we know that Guyana is not going to be doing that. Guyana said in a statement that is going to be pursuing its own interests at the Summit of the Americas. So it intends to be there. So perhaps um, I know that Air Finale currently is in Barbados and their Agrifest maybe is flying straight to Los Angeles from there. It remains to be seen. But this is the jet setter, folks. And this summit again is happening in Los Angeles next month. Next month, guys, it's from the 6th to the 10th of June. And we're going to continue to bring you updates on this front. But again, Cuba, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, they're up in arms, folks. They have condemned their exclusion from this U.S. Summit of the Americas. Mm -hmm. Summit of the Americas. That's what's going on in the international scene, folks. Back home, back home, closer to home. We're coming down. We're coming up. We're closer to home. Folks, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff happening, you know. For instance, we are noting, we are noting uh, that uh, there's a teacher whose body was found in her home, a 41-year-old teacher whose body was found in her home, decomposed, folks, 
And the teacher is Omega Alt, A U L T is her surname, Alt. I think that's how it's pronounced, Omega Alt. And her decomposed body, she's just 41 years young, found in her home there in Crane. And the report, we pick it up, guys. And I want to thank Sabuk News uh, for, for contributing to this report. Uh, says that the de decomposing body of a 41-year-old teacher uh, was found at her home at Crane on the West Coast of Mara on Friday, just yesterday, folks. And the police have launched a search for her husband in connection with her death. Yep, 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 yep. They're hunting for him, and he is Clarence Farley. The report says that the dead woman's the dead woman is Omega Alt of Crane Public Road, was Coast Demara, who was not seen by her family for two weeks. Yep, 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 yep. So the police are hunting him in relation to Omega's death. And again, we want to say our thoughts and prayers go out to this family. Certainly, surely, they're hurting at this time. Uh, like families in similar situations, and we want to say our thoughts and prayers are with them. Yep, yep, yep. Let justice be done, folks. That's all we ask. Let justice be done. Who can share the time like and smash the emoji button? Let justice be done, my people. Clear Capel, good to see you. Let justice be done. Let justice be done. I see Claudet Bobby Lewis is here as well. Let justice be done. And Sandrine Baird. Let justice be done. Please and thank you. That's all that's required. Justice to be done. So we're following that. The teacher's decomposed body, Omega Alt, that was found at our crane home. 41 years. Gone much too soon. Definitely, definitely gone too soon. You know, these boys, them jagabats and trench crapos, you know, they promised all kinds of things when they come in, when they came in. But we still we still waiting. Fingers still crossed. Maria Westmoreland. Uh, Watson. Uh, Montague, is that how the surname is pronounced? Watson, Maria Watson, good to have you. Connor Bobby Lewis, you know, them Jacobas promise a lot of things, right? Good to have you. Rohan Basantram, good to have you. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Basantram. Good to have you, Rohan. And uh, I see Wendy Roland is here as well. Savitry Whiskey Session is here. Good to have each and every one of you. Folks, we don't have to agree, you know. We don't have to agree. We say all are welcome in the in the ring. And we love, we love, we love. You know, if folks have a contrary view of things, you you um that's that's what the ring is for, you know. Us to trash out issues. We gotta fight, contend with ideas, guys. But good to have you, good to have you. I see our friend from the Bronx is here. Good to have you. Rakim Hercules, good to have you up again, again, again. Good to have you, Rakim Hercules. You Rakim, your foot short, boy. Your foot short. This John Alexander, Karen Clark. Good to see you, folks. Good to have you guys with us. And we are also following, folks, in news and information, we are following what's happening there in Sophia. And we're learning today uh, that the Ministry of Health, uh, Ministry of Health driver, uh, uh, Mr. McPherson, uh, Ministry of Health driver, uh, Mr. McPherson, uh, was gone down yesterday in Sophia at his home in front of his children. Can you imagine that? Oh my God! What well, this country is coming to? What this country is coming to? Colin McPherson gunned down there right at his home yesterday. Lord have his mercies. Lord have his mercy. What is country coming to people? Mm? And you can't even enjoy the peace of your home. Huh? You can't even enjoy the peace of your home. Oh, this is sad. This is sad. This is sad. This is sad. Colin McPherson. A Ministry of Health driver lost his life yesterday. We told you about some of this on our morning program yesterday, but we get, we've get gotten some more information, and we think it's our duty to update you folks. According to the report we're picking up, and I want to thank Sharda Backers, again, out of Starbuck News for this. As Sharda says here, the police are on the hunt for a lone gunman who shot and killed a Ministry of Health driver at his Sophia home on Thursday night. Believe it or not, on Thursday night, dead is Colin McPherson, 43, a fire of four, of lot 460 D D field Sophia. According to the report we have before us, the attack unfolded around 12 sorry, 2140 hours, around 2140 hours, while McPherson was sitting on a bench in front of his house with three men, including his 26-year-old nephew. And there are indications that one of the other men was the intended target of the shooter. One of the other men. May have been the intended target of the shooter. McPherson's 18-year-old son and 13-year-old daughter were in the house. They ran for cover after the gunman entered the house. Folks, are you hearing that? 
Oh my God. After the government entered the house, the police had a statement issued yesterday. He said, that the eyewitness recalled that he was in the house when he heard a loud explosion, after which McPherson rushed inside and shouted, close the door. Upon seeing the gunman, the eyewitness said he ran into the bedroom in the house, leaving McPherson in the living room. Two more loud explosions were heard, and then there was silence. The eyewitness said he emerged from the bedroom shortly after, which he saw McPherson lying motionless in the living room. The statement explained. Signs of the Times from their voice promise a crime prevention plan. We still waiting, right? We still waiting. They said they can make peace and tranquility in this country great again, like Aisuko. We still waiting. We still waiting, folks. We gotta take this country back. We gotta take this country back from the Jagabats and the trench crapoles, the tadpoles and the cricketers. Yep, yep, yep. From the Karen crows, the scarecrows, and the jumping bird. We gotta take it back. We see too much of this. Too much of this. 18 months. And how much more we can take? How much more we can take? You, 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 you hear about this? You hear about the crime plan in the Independence Day message? Huh? Yeah, but who rig and who jig and who frig? And all kinds of nonsense. Right? You don't hear about things like this. Right? Present a plan on how we can combat crime the man. We got all the money in the world. Money to burn. We just got paid, folks. Right? Let me talk about this, the man. Let us talk about this. Jagabats and trench crapos. Marilyn Thomas, good to see Ropes and Ben. Marilyn Thomas, your name calling. Your name calling. What the crime prevention plan? Where there would be with at? Don't come around with funny. Don't. So that's another issue we're looking at, folks. That is yet another issue we're looking at. And then, you know, we're also looking at this whole issue with the Barnwell mother, Tracy Flu, who lost her three children yesterday. Oh, my, my, my. We're following that. We're following that issue. Also, folks, our thoughts and prayers go out with Tracy Flu and entire family, you know, uh, Tracy is the cousin of Lima Flubes, one of our members of parliament. And, you know, you know, the, the, Lima spoke to us yesterday and the grief and the, the everything, the sorrow and uh, the bereavement. God of mercy, Lord of his mercy. This family is going through it, folks. This family is going through it. And we told you guys just quite recently, just quite recently, we told you guys just quite recently, uh, the young lady, Tracy Best, would have spoken to the media um, on uh, the, uh, possible reasons why she felt she felt that um, this may have been happening, uh, possible reasons. And um, we want to bring some of that to you. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about another aspect of this unfolding uh, sad, sad, sad story. Uh, I think this was Tracy. Uh, being uh, spoken to by the media, we're picking up these comments out of Capital News, a fantastic source too for valid and credible information. Uh, thank you, Capital News, for this one. Ensure you guys got information. I get the phone call saying that my house on fire when I don't work. I really don't know what happened last night at my house. I was in a relationship. I put an abusive boyfriend. <laughs> I, wrote, I go to the station, countless time to make report. This month, it's supposed to be, supposed to be recorded. And he tell me that oh, anytime I go to court, it's going to be the last day I ever see a police. And I'm going to kill me. And enough night, I used to go there running because he used to want to put in knives to me, <laughs> running me with cutlass, telling me how he kill me. And I now see me cheering. Then the next time he tell me how he kill me and bury me, nobody now gonna find me body. How did it feel when you leave for work? You used to have to the house or something? No, I used to carry them by my parents. And then I asked my workplace, I explained to them that this guy tell me anytime he see me coming to work, he gonna bore me up and so a time of police had to stop and collect me because he started chucking me up in tongues. I asked for a couple days off of work just for like, don't get for seeing because it get a restraining order for him not to come to me place. And last night he called me and I refused to answer the phone. I don't know why you why would do such a thing to me, sir. <laughs> he threatened me enough time I think I'm born on me house, but me not in born on me house with me chair and I'm inside. Why did he just put him out here? 
Yep, a very, very sad situation there, folks. Very, very sad situation there. And of course, you know that fire took place in Barnwell uh, yesterday, claiming the lives of those three young children. Uh, in what a sad situation. You heard from the mother there, Tracy Flew, uh, talking about the situation that may have led to uh, her children being burnt to death in uh, her home. Uh, she was at work at the time, eight year old Timothy Kippins. You had six year old. Uh, Treshawn Kippins and one-year-old Zelia Flu were the three children who met their demise in that gruesome, gruesome manner. Our thoughts and prayers, as we said, folks, uh, go out to this family in their time of bereavement. Our thoughts and our thoughts and prayers. But we're examining so many aspects of this story, guys, because you know, information coming to hand suggests uh, that had they had better roads, for instance, in that area, this. Uh, tragedy may have been prevented because the fire service uh, fire tender um, that was in, en route to that house there in Barnwell to fire uh, got stuck in the mud and could not got, uh, get to the house in time to pull out that blaze. The fire tender, folks, oh, we talk about 45% uh, GDP, increasing GDP, the, uh, the, the highest in this region, if not in the world currently. Uh, folks, uh, we talk about being having so much money and folks for the want of a decent road. Three young people uh, perhaps lost their lives uh, yesterday. And, and, and uh, folks are saying that you know, had they had just better roads there, the fire tender could have may have gone to that house in time. And we are seeing uh, some comments uh, coming out of the NDC chairman, the Neighborhood Democratic uh, Council chairman in that area there who was saying that there were proposals for Barnwell Road uh, to be repaired. And they, those proposals were ignored, Commissioner Cole. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. And, uh, you know, I saw a comment there from Commissioner Cole, and um, and she's she's absolutely right uh, that the the uh, fire service has said has said that this fire was electrically, re, uh, was related, uh, had its origins in some electrical issues, according to the, fi according to the fire service. Um, investigation that was done. Uh, but the NDC chairman says that proposals were put forward to the current installed regime to have those roads in Barnwell uh, finished and upgraded properly. And those proposals have been ignored. Uh, part of the reporting we're picking out, again, so thankful out of uh, Sabic News and uh, reporter David Papana. Uh, we're so grateful. David is a tremendous journalist. Uh, and this report says that representatives, um, representations rather, have been repeatedly made at both the regional and national levels uh, for the deplorable access roads to Barnwell North on the east bank of Demerara to be rehabilitated. Yep, yep, yep. I myself went down in, in, in Barnwell and did some video footage a few months back trying to highlight the problem there and ask for some help. And this is coming out of now the representatives the representatives um, of that of that on that NDC for that area, who said that again, uh, the rep representations have been made repeatedly at both the regional and national levels for deplorable access roads to Barnwell North on the east bank of the Mara to be rehabilitated, but to no avail. But to no avail, according to the chairman of the Mocker Arcadia NDC. Randolph Adams. Yep, that's what Randolph is saying. Countless representations were made to no avail. Uh, Adams made this disclosure, according to SN, in wake of the state of the road being highlighted by the Gandhi, uh, the Ghana Fire Service as a hindrance in its response to the fire that claimed the life of these the three children we, we, we spoke of, uh, Tracy's three children, 
um, um, yep, 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 yep. Even the fire service highlighting that. Um, uh, the fire service says here, um, sorry, the chairman says here, Adams, uh, Mr. Adams says, Randolph Adams says, had there been proper road access, the fire service would have been able to get to that house um, that was burning. We know, we know all, we, we, we are now, sorry, we know all aggrieved by what has transpired and led to the demise of those three innocent children, the uh, chairman of the NDC, Mr. Randolph Adams, uh, noted there. Yep, yep, yep. For the want of roads, folks. For the want of roads, that could cost you life. All right. Read the clerk for the ones of just proper roads, right? I hope that Leon go for down roads good. And the house is never on fire. I see like, making a lot of mischief in the comments there. I, I hope the, the roads were here nice. I hope so. Because for the want of roads, folks, for the want of just roads, right? For the want of just roads, you can lose your life in this country. Proper roads. Folks, it's 29 degrees outside. How is it where you are? They're saying here at weather.com, it feels like 35. For us, it feels like 29. It feels really great to be outside. Uh, picture perfect, picture perfect weather. Picture perfect weather. Folks, today, for a substantive discussion, for our substantive discussion, we are talking, we are talking, we are talking about the PVP. Chagabats and trench crappers. They're looking tin. They're looking tin, people. They're looking tin. All right? Looking tin. Give the share and like polls. She don't like, but perhaps when she was younger. Right? Pumps on the different circumstances. She could take a poll. But she don't like polls. Right? When she see polls, she's get frightened. I don't know if it's her age and stage. She don't like polls. She's condemned them. Mm hmm She's cussed them up. She ain't like see polls. She ain't like hold polls. She want to hear about polls. We says the agent stage. But you know when you get to the agent stage, it's time to come off the scene. When you want to see Paul anymore. It's time to come off the scene. Call it Bobby Lewis knows this. You want to hear about Paul, you want to see Paul, you want to touch Paul. Right? You got to move off the scene. Whiskey session, Edward Gonzalez. Edward says, the weather is beautiful in New York. I hope so. She ain't like Paul's. Right? I see Junkie Larry, Granny Fit, Granny Fit. Right? She, don't, she don't like see Paul. She don't. She don't. She doesn't. Right? You know, I saw um, I saw my colleague talk there about New York, and there's a fascinating piece uh, piece of real estate in New York that I love. Uh, I, I hope I'm calling the name right. The High Line down there in Manhattan is an old railway track. Um, uh, one that is not runs on the road, but runs you know that one that runs. What is that? Like a story up. And they have rehabilitated that track into a lovely garden area for a long stretch. And you can just walk on that high line. It's an old rehabilitated railway track. And there's lovely sections of it, beautiful greenery, and beautiful to be outside in summer. Think about the high line this morning as we contend with these issues here and guilty share. Who don't like Paul? Who don't like Paul? Huh? She don't. Then boy says she's age and stage, Patricia Kassoon. Right? Marilyn Thomas? Maybe she need Paul. M maybe that's the thing. Right? They used to like Paul. She used to like Paul one time. Right? She used to love Paul. But now she doesn't. She ain't like Paul's. She ain't like Paul. So we saw her recently condemning a poll. And this was the a poll that was done by the Institute. The International Republican Institute. The International Republican Institute. And they were questioning Guyanese in a number of areas. The facts is the facts. GT boy. Glenses Mingoborn. Glyces Mingoborn. The facts are the facts. Sheila boy child. The facts are the facts. Folks, share the damn live stream for us. Smash that emoji button. And let's talk about the polls that Gail don't like. Because, you know, any good poll must stand up. All right? That's the, that's the prerequisite. The acid test. Any good poll must stand up to scrutiny. All right? When you scrutinize it, it must be able to stand up. 
hold up strong. And the International Republican Institute is not no fly by night. Right. They didn't start working yesterday. But when the International Republican Institute or IRI unleashed the poll, guilt started to tremble. Right? You know, they, they, that old soca song said, one step forward, two step backward, and tremble. When Gail see the poll, she started to tremble. She started to tremble. Here's some things that come out of the poll, right? Here's some things that come out of this poll. Is the things that come out of the poll that she didn't like, right? So Shan Sudhari says she needs the right poll, right? But yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Here's some things that came out of this poll. Here are things. Sukhchan says, show me the right poll. Tommy Gibbs, right? Show me the right poll. Here are things that come out of this poll. This is the International Republican Institute. Brothers and sisters, the International Republican Institute. Here's some things that come out of this poll. Is this frightening she, you know? She gets shaky, Tommy Gibbs. When she see the things emanating out of the poll, it's a strong poll. She gets shaky. Right? She needs to start giving away. She feel like hell it. <laughs> she has to sit down. All right? Listen to this. 22% of the people in this country having trouble feeding themselves and their family. 22% of the people in this country. Commissioner Cole? Claudette Bovell Lewis, can you believe that? 22% of the people in this country got trouble feeding themselves and their family. 22%. Things tight. That's what the poll telling us. All right? And then you got 17% of the persons in this country. They say that unemployment is the number one issue. You understand why just a few days ago, they married a pack out with people looking for work on them cruise ship. Over 9,000 people have gone on the bread line since people came in. According to their own figures. According to their own unemployment figures. Over 9,000 Guyanese. You see, this is the fact. That is like salt for the church crap of box. This is the facts that is salt for the box of the church crap of and when you start pouring on the facts on the back, oh, they start boiling up. Right? And this is the point now where they say, we are SOPs. <laughs> Look for it. Yeah, it's coming. Watch for the comment. We are SOPs. Right? The facts is like salt for the bats and the trench crapples and the jagabats, tadpoles, and cricketers. Scarecrows, carrion crows, and jumbie birds. Salt for the back. 17% of people in this country Say unemployment is the number one issue. Right? Eighty one percent of Guyanese say that they want electoral reform. Eighty one, they say they want electoral reform. But listen to this. Here might be why. Only twenty eight percent of Guyanese believe the election results reflect the will of the people. Only 38% of Guyanese believe that the election results reflect the will of the people. That's because them boys installed Suzette Washington. They install Chinsing Henry. Commissioner Cole, they're installed. 38% of Guyanese only believe that the election results reflect the will of the people. Can you believe that? Here's story they they want to be here. Here are things they want to be talk about. Huh? Thirty-five percent of Guyanese. Thirty-five percent say that they have enough to survive. Enough to survive, but can't afford anything but survival. And you and I know we got to move past just living, just surviving. Right? It's, not, it's, it's, it's not okay just to survive. You got to thrive. 
right? You got to thrive, not just survive. You got to thrive. And then another important factoid coming out of this, this poll that Gail don't like. She don't like poll. Remember, she showed me the right poll. That's the problem. 98% of Guyanese sit in the dark what happened in the oil and gas sector. They said they know one thing. Marilyn Larimer and Patricia Kisoon, Orindon Cook, Margaret Nelson, they said they didn't understand one thing. What happened in the oil and gas sector? Right? But them boys designed it since they take over to ensure that it's opaque. Now you can't see, you don't know what is happening. All them boys saying is trust me. How are you going to trust a vagabond? Huh? How are you going to trust a trench crap on a jagabat? Huh? How are you going to do that? 98% of Guyanese, brothers and sisters, they said they know one thing. What happened in the oil and gas sector? Right? Which accounts for the largest portion of our national GDP or gross domestic product. Our GDP. You see that? And then there was another poll we saw. Well, if, if the share didn't like that poll, she ain't gonna like this one, because this one more strong. Right? Or this one is of equal strength. So again, if she didn't like that last poll, no, this one will be too strong for she. This one be the right poll for Gail. She don't like poll. So watch for the blowback with this one. Who can share, share, share the damn live stream for us? Who can smash that emoji button? Who got the courage of the conviction to smash that emoji button for us and share the live stream, guys? Who got it? All right. Now, this are the poll that I'm certain Gail will run from. This are the poll. All right. She ain't gonna like Sheila by child. Chin Sing Henry, Nadia C4, she ain't gonna like this one. All right? And this is the Caribbean COVID-19 Food Security and Livelihoods Impact Survey. The Caribbean COVID-19 Food Security and Livelihoods Impact Survey. The Impact Survey. All right? The Impact Survey. This was launched by the Caribbean community, the impact survey, it was launched by the Caribbean community. And it says here, it was launched to rapidly gather data on the impacts to livelihoods, food security, and access to markets, right? Which has shown, this is the, this is the survey, that Guyanese are adopting negative measures to cope with the ongoing difficulties associated with accessing food. Things tight. Right? Guyanese, we are adopting negative measures to cope with the ongoing difficulties associated with accessing food. Can you believe that? Right? And let me get a little background. Right? To just let you know, and just let Gail know, this is good poll. Right? This is good poll. This poll is shaky. Like Gail. Right? And that's why when Gail see poll like this, she can tremble. It's good poll. This survey was implemented by the World Food Program. The WFP. It was impl implemented by the World Food Program with support from the Food and Agriculture Organization. This is of the UN, the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, right, of the, um, of the UN, right? And four rounds of the survey, four, right? If Gia can go one round with good poll, she can go four. 
after four rounds of polling, right, the survey has been completed since the beginning of the pandemic. And it was recently, recently completed and released. Recently completed and released. Right? Recently completed and released. Again, this is the Caribbean COVID-19 Food Security and Livelihoods Impact Survey. And like I said to you, it, is, it was implemented by the World Food Program with support from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the United Nations. It's good poll. It's good poll. Right? The problem with Gail Shin, Shin, um, she me the right poll. She said, she said the first poll by IRI, we talked about that just now. They have integrity. They're not strong enough to stand up on its own. She like poll with integrity. She like poll with strength. I see Rita Clark says, Sherry, you want to kill Gail. Right? Well, it is appointed unto man wants to die and after death, the judgment. Isn't that me? It's the father said it. It is appointed unto man. If we can dead, we can dead. Paul or otherwise, something I carry you. Might as well good Paul carry you. Something got to carry you. So I'll give you the background to the poll. Just to let Gail know it's good Paul. Right? I'll give you the background to the poll because I want us to know. I want you to be able to recognize good poll where you see it. Who's sharing the damn live stream for us? You know? The problem that Gail got, that she ain't seen good poll in a long time, so she can't even recognize it. And then the whole lie is too much he taken. Little thing. You know how? 25% of citizens are increasingly worried about meeting their food and other essential needs. This is Guyanese. Right? This is not a new AFC poll. It's not a WPA poll. It's not AFC poll. 35% of Guyanese are increasingly worried about meeting their food and other essential needs. 35. 35. 35. Right? Because times are trying. Because times are hard. Because things are tight. 52% of Guyanese have sold their productive assets. 52. 52% hmm? of Guyanese sell, sold their productive assets. Right? I see Sheila Boy's child hashtag, good poll. Right? I think that's a decent hashtag, good poll. 52% of Guyanese have sold their productive assets. Right? Listen to this. You remember them by scrap COVID-19? Dash away COVID-19, dash away all the rules, the regulation, and put the car. 58% of the respondents say they continue to worry about getting COVID-19 because them boys don't care. Them boys are not concerned. So 58% of the persons said they're worried about getting COVID-19. Hmm? You know, this is a snapshot of the wicked, stinking, dirty PVP governance. It's a snapshot. Trench crapos and chagabats, tadpoles, cricketers, scarecrows, carrion crows, and zombie birds. It's a snapshot of what they've been doing. Another 58% of the respondents in Guyana say they are moderately or severely food insecure and the fao the food and agriculture organization the fao right the fao and also the other organization that they did this poll in collaboration with the world food program they have said that this figure here is above the regional average 
this 58 percent who are moderately or severely food insecure right they know where the next meal coming from the people that know this work they say this is above the regional average so you know them boys like say oh is the war in ukraine it happened in other Caribbean countries too. Well, the people who know, the experts, the technical experts, they said this is higher than the regional average. The angry of Zandi, you think you understand that? Lizzie Simon, we understand or we overstand? Glycis Mingo Born, Claire Capel, the angry of Zandi. It's higher than the regional average. Lord have his mercies. Right? And then listen to this. You remember, we've already said, 52% said they have sold their productive assets. Right? Which means that they ain't got too much a thing left. Right? You understand that? 64% said so they have reduced spending on other essential needs. 64% said they have reduced spending on other essential needs. They have reduced spending on all the essential needs. Reduce spending. Right? 94% says they have depleted savings. This guy needs, you know. 94% said they have depleted savings. 94 things tight on the trench crapos and jagabats. Things tight. 94 said, we ain't got nothing in it. We ain't got too much in the bank. We ain't got too much save. We ain't got too much on the mattress. We ain't got too much bear in the backyard. 94%. All right. Another 82% say that they have difficulty in accessing markets. Primarily due to the lack of financial means. Right? The market got a couple of things, but we don't have the money to go and buy. This <laughs> anti them buys 18 months in. 18 months in. This is the Caribbean COVID 19 food security and livelihoods impact survey. 18 months in. And 82% of persons say they have difficulty in accessing markets. The market got a little boring, got a little cabbage, got a little pack chains, so. but they don't have the money. They say because of the primarily due to lack of financial means. They ain't got the Dunzo. They ain't got the Granger. Right? They ain't got the trench crapo. The trenchy. The 2000 bill. They ain't got that. And then finally, folks. In this Caribbean COVID-19 food security livelihoods impact survey, it says 98% of the persons responding to this poll, right? Report higher than usual food prices, right? Higher than usual food prices, which is more widespread when compared to June 2020. That's according to the survey, the poll, the poll that Gail running from. 98% say that food prices are higher than they were compared to June 2020. Well, we didn't hear. We didn't care. We didn't know. When Green just said, give me some time. Folks, we're moving. We're going someplace. We're down to something. Who vex vex? Who vex lose? We were on a growth trajectory. We're public servants. 
we're seeing an increase in wages and salary every single fiscal year, every budget year. Yep. We've seen some increases. Piracy was going down. Crimes were on the decrease. Infrastructure was being looked at. Healthcare was being looked at. Education, they're coming up to a standard. My, my, my. What a difference 18 months could make. What a difference two years could make. Because them boys trying to tell us they're going to make sugar great again. <laughs> Which side, GT boy? Which side, Nadia C. Ford? Which side, Patricia Kisun? Huh? Which side, John Jones? Which side, Glycis Bingo Born? Which side? Huh? Since them boys take over, there's been a 4% reduction in sugar. They said Wales and coming back. They just went and shut down I flat. They broke up and more packaging plant. And Blairmont is about to fall. Skeldon is about to fall. Sugar has fallen. Has fallen. Sugar has fallen. There's been a 4% reduction in sugar production. And them boys say they can make sugar great again. Well, if you think that was bad. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Right? This is the non-oil sector. Remember, oil got the economy looking nice because of the returns. But this is non-oil sector. There's been a 20% reduction in rice production. 20%. This is thing thing for share the live stream for. So others get credible and valid information. A 20% reduction in rice production. And then by said I can make rice great again. <laughs> by 20% reduction in the production of Pali. Hmm? Bauxite. They said they could bring back bauxite. They said they could bring back bauxite. Like raising Lazarus from the dead, they could bring back bauxite. There's been a 3.8% reduction in the production of bauxite. And this is an under them boys, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can say Jack Joe Bright. <laughs> it's which, which bulb they are using to compare and contrast. Hmm? Which bulb? It bright like a tortoise white bulb. So that is bauxite, that is rice, that is sugar. We're talking about the non-oil sector. In gold production, there's been a 14.8% reduction. A 14.8% reduction. 14.8%. Reduction in gold production. Folks, you understand why things tight. In 2020, the inflation rate was 0 0.09, something like that. 0 0.0. Sorry, 0 0.9, 0 point something. Let me get the right thing for you. Credible and valid all the time. Nothing less will do. Credible and valid. That's how we want it. Credible and valid. That is how we desire it. Let's get that inflation figure for you. Now inflation about 8 or 9%. And I say that because the more minimal or small inflation is, the more you're spending power. Right? Yeah, in 2020, it was 0 0.9. 0 0.9, it's about 8 or 9% now. The higher the inflation is, it means you've got money in your pocket, you're in a salary, 
But when you go to the supermarket, it's buying less. And you know this because when you go to the supermarket, you get five, six bags. You fetch it and you're feeling nice. It says, nice time. Nice time. But now when you go to the supermarket, hmm, if you get one plastic bag, you get plenty. But the same money. That's because of inflation. The price is going up. But your salary ain't going up. Your standard of living ain't going up. But the cost of living going up. Higher prices in the marketplace. Same money in your pocket though. Right? In 2020, on the Winston Jordan, inflation rate was 0 0.9. By 2021, it was 5.7. By 2021, it was 5.7. And they have a projection for 2022 is going to be 4.1. Our economics guys who are on these numbers say right now it's about, it's about 7 or 8, if not 9% right now. That's why the price is washing with not. Washing with tail. That's governance on the PPP, folks. That is governance on the damn boys. That's valid, credible information folks it takes something out of us to pull the team together and to have the guys go after these numbers so that we can get the information for you All right you got to read the reports you got to read these books and so forth pull out this information and package it in this way so that it makes sense to you and you understand why when the man in the street said things tight we mean is inflation high? Right? People have no confidence in the regime to lead them. That's what they're talking about. That is what it's about, folks. And it costs us something month after month to go after this information on your behalf because we know that good information matters. And that is why we ask that you guys continue to share you found something we've said useful, share the broadcast that others can hear it as well. And you smash that emoji button too because the content has meant something to you and you partner with us so we can keep bringing you this kind of content and also improving on it. It's important for us to keep tweaking what we do to get it just right. Get it optimal for your consumption and so we say partner with us so we can keep doing this work and keep moving forward we are available via zelle via paypal via cash app via mmg we also available via moneygram and western union as well our whatsapp number is 627-6963 if you guys need any guidance it's 627-6963 and that's our mmg number as well 627-6963 mmg is a local cash app we call it 627-6963. That's our WhatsApp number. If you're in the diaspora, of course, you got to put 592 in front of that. 627-6963. We'll give you any guidance you need. We got Zelle, we got Cash App, we got PayPal, we got MMG. We are available via Western Union, via MoneyGram as well. Of your convenience so that you can contribute to our programs. And we are so heartened by that. So we can keep moving forward. Pace and power. Pace and power. We're going to be back tomorrow, folks. With another broadcast, with another episode of our Below the Belt International Podcast. Broadcasting from the National Capital City of Georgetown, where it's 29 degrees outside. And we hope it's good weather where you guys are as well. That's our time. That's our program. Stay safe, the Angry and Happy birthday, Beatrice Selby. Happy, happy birthday. It's Sula Allen. Good to see you. Happy birthday, Beatrice Selby. Auntie Sandra Hanover. Hope it's good where you are. And Dan Grips, Andy. Hope it's great where you are as well. Commissioner Cole, things tight. Yep. Cherry Baskin, Greenwich. Good to have you from Barbados. Good to see you, Cherry. Pace and Power, Chavanza Williams. Good to see you too. And Carol Niles, Noble, Wendy Rowland. Good to see you. Great people out there. Rowena Williams, rock and come in. Good to see you, Deborah Leach. Have a great rest of the weekend. Folks, we're going to see you guys right back here tomorrow. Same time same place have a great afternoon guys stay safe get some sunlight it's beautiful weather to be outside especially where we are get some sunlight
Be gentle with yourself. Have a great rest of the weekend. See you guys right back here tomorrow. Stay safe. Stay safe.